Welcome back IB Economics students to this video lecture today on first degree price discrimination. Okay, so we're going to be going over first degree price discrimination, its definition and its graph. So what is price discrimination? This is a very quite an easy chapter, quite an easy unit. You guys could um, understand it quite easily. So price discrimination basically refers to when sellers charge different prices for goods for the exact same good to different consumer groups which has um, the same cost of production, okay? So when sellers sell the ma sold, um, the goods at different prices for, or sell the exact same good, okay? Sell the exact same good or service, or service, exact same goods slash services, at different prices to different consumer groups. And given that the cost of production is equal, okay? So this, this is the definition for price discrimination, okay? Price discrimination definition, okay? Now, there are three degrees of price discrimination. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the first degree of price discrimination, okay? So first degree price discrimination. First degree price discrimination is when sellers sell the maximum price consumers are willing to pay with no difference in the product at all okay so this is the definition of first degree price discrimination where sellers sell the maximum price consumers are willing to pay with absolutely no difference in the product at all so what are some examples okay what are some real world examples of, of first degree price discrimination let's think about this what are some industries real world examples okay what are some industries where uh different firms charge different prices to consumers at the maximum price they're willing to buy okay for example auction houses okay auction houses sell the exact same good however to different sellers with different elasticities so the one seller they might sell the exact same good for this price however another seller might outbid them and sell it to the other person therefore the same goods are sold at different prices to the maximum point okay to the maximum point to the maximum price consumers are willing to pay okay so we should highlight this okay the maximum price you know, we'll highlight this the maximum price at which consumers are willing to pay uh, is, is the price at which a uh, first degree price discrimination charges. Okay, auction house. Another example, car dealership or second hand car dealership. Second hand. So when you go to the second hand car dealership, um, you know, they have the recommended price. However, that is usually not the price at which you are going to buy the car at. You're going to jack up the prices by ten or $20,000, for example. So they want you to bargain down. So this is an example of, of um, car dealerships wanting you to charge the maximum price at which uh, consumers are willing and able to buy. Okay, so this is an example of price discrimination because the same exact car may be sold to another person with higher elasticities at a lower price. Okay. No, no. Now that we have an, an, a wide, broad example of first degree price discrimination, why don't we talk about what gives the price, what are the prerequisites for a price discrimination? Okay. What, what, how do we ensure that price discrimination or the, uh, the ability to set um, different prices are, is not abused? Okay. There are three different factors. Okay. The first factor, okay, the first factor is what we call price making ability. So um, the market structure cannot be a perfectly competitive market structure because under a perfectly competitive market structure, firms do not have price making abilities. And if, do not, and if the firms do not have price setting abilities, they do, they do not have the ability to price discriminate. So you must either be an oligopoly or you must be a monopoly. If you don't understand this, you have to go back to our previous videos where we're going to be uh, reviewing that. Okay? The second prerequisite for price discrimination to occur is information must be public. Okay, Information um, is present where firms can identify groups, groups of consumers based on their elasticity, elasticity. Okay. So this is the second prerequisite. Okay. Firms must be able to uh, identify 
the elasticity of the consumers in order to uh, understand and in order to um, to be able to discriminate against the consumers. Okay, so this is the uh, second prerequisite. The third prerequisite is to prevent resale. Okay, what do I mean by prevent resale? This is to prevent people or consumers to just buy from the cheaper market and sell to the uh, to the more expensive market. Okay, this is to ensure that profit is not lost. Okay, so that's that's what that's what it means. Okay, now that we have a broad understanding of what uh, price discrimination is, what secondary, uh, what, what first degree price discrimination is, why don't we move to into the graphing section? Okay, what what does the graph look like? So really, really importantly. Um, First degree price discrimination cannot occur in perfect competition. So I'm going to draw a basic monopoly graph. Okay, so here is the demand curve. Here is the marginal revenue curve, you know, twice as steep and can go negative. Here's the marginal cost curve. I'm just going to draw the marginal cost curve as a vertical line right here. Okay, so you know what? Let's label all of these, uh, all of these respective lines. Make it a little thicker. Okay, so of course, this is the price. This is the quantity. This is the marginal revenue. It can go negative and it is twice as steep as the uh, demand curve. This is the demand curve. This is, of course, the marginal cost curve, MC marginal cost curve. Okay, now if we remember anything about uh, about monopolies, we will remember that firms will want to produce at the point of profit maximization. That of which is when MR equals MC, okay? When marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This is the quantity at which profit maximization is reached. And if we link it back here, okay, this is what we will get. These two lines, these two uh, dotted lines. So this is the price and this is the quantity at which a firm will want to charge in order to maximize their profits. Okay, in order to maximize their profits, firms will want to charge uh, at this point. Now, what does this actually mean? Okay, this means that at this section right here, this triangle that I am highlighting right here, there is a, a consumer surplus. Okay, this entire section is a consumer surplus. However, if firms are charging at the maximum amount a, 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 a consumer is willing and able to buy at, then the consumer surplus does not exist. Okay, therefore, this entire section, okay, this entire section that I just highlighted right here becomes Monopoly profit. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this out. So usually this part right here is just consumer surplus because firms because uh firms are not charging at that price. However, because uh the firms are charging at the maximum price at which consumers are willing and able to buy at, this section right here becomes uh, the original part, this yellow part, which originally the origin no consumer surplus becomes Monopoly profit. Okay. Why is that? That is because the firms are charging at any price, uh, at any price, uh, beyond, uh, the, the prof, the profit maximization part, that, which means that all additional consumer surpluses are no longer existing, which means that weight loss also doesn't occur. So I hope this video is helpful in explaining what first degree price discrimination is, um, the definition, some real world examples as, as seen right here, some prerequisites as well as what the graph looks like when uh, first degree price discrimination is graphed. So I hope this video is helpful and hope to 